Well, I think there, there are two things. The first is that the computer's perfect. It doesn't make mistakes. It responds in an absolutely predictable way. So in exploring anything that the computer's doing with you, anything that happens that you didn't want to happen is purely your fault. You can't really understand the other side of it. So in a sense, you're, you're pitting yourself against the perfect machine, trying to prove that you're just as perfect. Computer addicts tend to be men or boys, but Phyllis Arundale, who runs a sweet shop in Hertfordshire, proves that you don't have to be male to be computer mad. She bought one to help out with the accounts. The computer did in seconds what had previously taken her four or five hours of paperwork every night. And what did she do with the time she saved? She became a computer enthusiast. But devising her own programs, and getting inside the mind of the machine wasn't good enough for her. My latest project is, um, you see the link with the shop, the box? Uh, and that's a potentiometer. I'm uh, doing my first project, which is a um, printed circuit board, PCB. Uh, well, the printed circuit board, it's the beginning of the computer. Uh, in making, actually making your own computer, your, uh, uh, your own electronic uh, gadget, as it were. And that is a potentiometer that I need, that I need for the, uh, my first project. That's a dual potentiometer, and that is the single one. And uh, uh, these are the capacitors. This is quite amazing. I mean, you're not content with programming computers. You want to make them yourself now. Well, that's the, it's a challenge. It's exciting. And after all, this is the very beginning of the whole thing, so I like to know, I like to start uh, at, the, uh, at the beginning. And then I'll know how the, com uh, the computer even begins to operate before uh, I can take uh, do any more peripherals. If I'm successful with this project, I can do something a little more adventurous. You're not becoming a sort of computer addict, are you? Well, I don't know. I may be an addict, but I, I call myself an enthusiast. An enthusiast, not an obsessive person. I'm a bit of a dilemma at the moment. I don't really know what I want to use it for. In 1982, the salesmen had their best year so far with home computers. There are now about 700,000 of them in Britain. The cheapest, at about £70, has sold around half a million. But something a bit more sophisticated could cost two or three times that amount. It's worth me spending more than £2,200 or whatever. I think. Um, the salespeople well, freely admit that a computer won't magically take over your household finances. They tend to stress the educational value for children. What they probably won't tell you is that you just might find your relationship with the machine more intense than you expected. Chris Carter works for a large borough council. He's their operations manager in the computer department. He works hard, but not so hard as to leave no time for pleasure. At lunchtime, he goes to the pub. Actually, he doesn't like pubs all that much, but then he doesn't go there to drink and socialize. As long as there's a computer game in sight, Chris Carter is happy. Because that machine doesn't have a lot for me. I'm not interested in filling myself full of it. If I found a machine, I'll stay with it until I master it. I can achieve some startlingly high scores by finding the chinks in the armour of the personal program. There are disadvantages. Usually, Chris has mastered the latest game within two or three days, while the machines are only changed over once a month. And he doesn't like the smoke and noise in the pub. It hinders concentration. So in the evenings, he stays at home, where he can get on with his hobby in peace and quiet.
Chris Carter has spent thousands of pounds on microcomputers, the kind you can just about fit into the spare bedroom. He puts in 20 to 40 hours a week at the keyboard, day and night, often right through the night. The revolution that brought the computer into the home didn't change his social life, it destroyed it. So great is Chris's enthusiasm that he's even got his three-year-old daughter Joanna learning some of the basic skills. She'll be even better at computing when she's learnt the alphabet. But what Chris is grappling with at the moment is the kind of programme that could transfer huge areas of professional expertise into the computer, so that he could have the knowledge of the doctor, the lawyer or the architect at his fingertips. I've been doing one on um, house selection, house design, and the method of doing this is putting in parameters which will tell you what sort of house will be best in what sort of area, what sort of soil. So how long did it take you to work that system out? assimilating all the knowledge uh, to put into the program and it'll be that'll be far from complete. It'll probably take the same amount of period. Do you think you'll use it? Will it be of any practical value at all? <laughs> You're joking. <laughs> I'll have a house by then I'm looking for at the moment. I doubt very much that it will be a real use to me. So I do. It's a problem. It's there. Why do people climb mountains? I mean, some people might think that you've really become obsessed with it. Addicted. Uh, it's a possibility. It's a possibility. Um, it's not more, it's not a major addiction. It's not going to cost me a lot of money in real terms. It costs me a lot of time. But it's time when my wife's asleep normally. I mean, there are some weeks when he'll get up at five in the morning because he's working on an idea. And he'll wait as soon as he wakes up, he'll go and sit down on the machine and start working on it. I'm semi-conscious when you tap, 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 put in the spare room. I mean, if the same situation had gone on for years, you know, I would begin to think, because we'd be better off in a room on his own, which is the one computer room. <laughs> because that's what he was absorbed doing all of his, all of his time. Do you have to have benefits? There are benefits. Oh, there are, but it's just I want to see something of you as well, you see. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bright and sunny day, just right for a stroll in the fresh air. But businessman Graham Hawker has got a problem that's keeping him indoors. He's trying to locate the Princess of Serenia, who's been abducted by a wizard. But on the way to the wizard's castle in the mountains, his way is blocked by a giant. It turns out that he can charm his way past the giant by playing the harp. This kind of computer game is partly a question of trial and error. Incorrect moves by the player are greeted with suitably dismissive replies. Graham Hawker admits that his relationship with home computers has been little short of obsessive. What is the thrill, though, that you get out of pitting your wits against a computer? Well, I think there are two things. The first is that the computer's perfect. It doesn't make mistakes. It responds in an absolutely predictable way. So, in exploring anything that the computer's doing with you, Anything that happens that you didn't want to happen is purely your fault. 